started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Biology in the Basement with Mr. Andrako. Um, this is the family edition. I have my family in the audience. Hopefully they'll help by answering some questions. It's weird not having you guys in class uh, and being able to interact with you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. See, Sam even agrees. So um, <clears throat> this is part two of your Living Things lecture, focusing on the virus. Yep. So we will be discussing the parts of a virus, the um, Mommy just life clap. cycle of a virus, as well as whether or not I it is living coffee. or not. So, let us get started. Of course, we need a fact of the day so that we can get started. And that is that stained glass most commonly found where? Churches. Yes. Stained glass was most commonly found in churches, and it was used as a way to make pictures for the illiterate to help to understand the teachings of the Bible. So that's why we had stained glass. Man. So there's your fact of the day. Now let's get to it. A virus is a very, very simple particle. As you said, mm -hmm. we've, we're still debating whether or not it is living. Um, I'm going to say it definitely exists, but we can debate that when we return. As far as a virus goes, it is only made up of two parts. It has a protein coat called a capsid. That is the outer covering of the virus. Mm -hmm. Usually it has receptors on it specific to its host. Inside of it, it has either DNA or RNA. And so it's as simple as that. The thing about a virus is that it needs a host to carry out its life cycle. A virus will infect, as you can see at this point, this is the site of infection, where it will insert its DNA or RNA. In this case, it's inserting its DNA, very difficult to see, but there's a red line here showing the viral form of DNA. And what do cells do best? make proteins and replicate and so they will actually use the workings of a cell to build the parts of a virus until it gets so full of virus particles that they explode a term that you guys all know as lysis hence the name this is the lytic cycle sometimes a virus will infect and it will just become part of the cell where every time the cell reproduces another cell with viral DNA will be produced and it will go through this until it builds up enough cells to undergo what is called an outbreak All right, unfortunately I have to always refer to the example of herpes as a cycle where you get infected with it and it lays low until a point where it enters the lytic cycle and you suffer from an outbreak when you actually are contagious. And so that's a, a little example of how a virus works where it takes control of the cell, uses its workings to build itself, and then release itself back into the wild. In your notes, on page N31, you will see that there are two types of infections. That is the lytic cycle, the one that results in lysis, and then the lysogenic cycle, the one where it develops a relationship with its host. But even lysogenic uh, infections <coughs> will eventually uh, result in lysis. Here's just another example of the two routes that the cells can take. Um, here are some of your examples of viral infections in humans. Luckily, as I was telling Dell earlier today, uh, since it's a little bit more familiar to him, all those shots and injections he got as a child protected him against many of these viruses. 
of course we can look over here and see where our buddy coronavirus is um, found right this is part of a SARS coronavirus that infects your respiratory system now there is a coronavirus that is part of the gastrointestinal parts like a norovirus or a rotavirus and that type of coronavirus would explain why people were buying all the toilet paper but um, <laughs> we're up here in the respiratory <laughs> system and um, and that's where your coronavirus falls just to give you a little extra information uh, one last thing for you guys to do um, you can of course do this um, on the lecture that I have shared with you in Google Classroom or you can just look at it now right our side-by-side -side comparison of is a virus living usually when people do the side-by-side -side comparison the vote is always no viruses are not living but I think after this year we may change our opinion on that so that covers everything. You know the details of your project. I've gone over them many times. Um, since this is part two of your lecture, I just want to remind you that your homework assignment for this unit started on page H119 and continues all the way until H130. So hopefully by the middle of next week, you will have these pages done. Okay, let's sign off. Sam, you want to get drum us out? Yeah. Sam, drum us out. <laughs>